So good afternoon. <laughs> Uh, so my name is uh, Romain Beaumont. I'm the, the assistant of, for this uh, lecture about, about uh, large deformations of solids. I'm going just to show you how all the material is um, on the internet. So there is a, a website uh, for metaphor. This is metaphor.ltas.ulg.ac.b. Uh, and um, in, on this website, you can go to teaching and then large deformations of solids. Um, the, a link to this website is on eCampus. You can also just type metaphor elements uh, on Google and you should find the site as the first link okay so on this uh, website uh, the first thing we are going to do is to uh, yes I guess that you have uh, already uh, downloaded the lecture notes so you know the you know this site, uh, but you have here a download area, and then you can download Metaphor for uh, Windows, uh, Mac, or uh, Linux. So if you want to, here I'm, I'm on Windows, so I can download it like this, and then download. So you, you can already, yes, you can already, if you want, download the license file. So the license file is here, so you can download it here and then uh, you can install uh, metaphor just by going to your download folder and double click on the installer so on this page there are also uh, the calendar for the tutorials so these uh, four sessions um, and we will talk also about the, the guidelines for the project, so all the details about the number of pages of your report, how to uh, display pictures, and so on. And uh, the projects here, so we will talk about that in, let's say, uh, one hour. Uh, and then that's all. So let's install metaphors. So I just click here, I say that I agree, I install it here. Here I will not install the documentation, so you can have a, an offline documentation of Metaphor. Uh, it's, it's rather big, there are many, many files, so it takes a long time to copy from the installer to your hard drive, so I will just disable that. But uh, you can install it and have, if you do not have internet, somewhere you have a copy of the documentation. Then install, so it takes a lot of time because there are many, many um, libraries. Um, the documentation is also on the same website, so if you go to the website here, if you click on Home and then Documentation, you have the whole documentation, which is the latest documentation of uh, Metaphor. And you will see that, that the tutorial presentation is made um, such as you do not have to read the whole documentation of Metaphor, of course. So the, you need to read the tutorial and uh, there are many links from the tutorial to some particular pages of the documentation. So you will almost never go through the whole document, documentation of, uh, of Metaphor. So the next step here is, is the well, a step uh, concerning also additional libraries of the compiler. So you just click OK and then you install everything here 
I've already installed that on my PC, so I just closed that window, but you can install it if you ha don't have the... And the last step is also you click OK and then OK. So the last step is uh, configuration for those who would like to couple, for example, Metaphor with other software such as uh, Samsef uh, and so on. So I just say quit and then close. Okay. So in order to run uh, Metaphor, you have a, an icon here, so you can just double click on it. And well, I hope that it will open a window such as this one on your PC. Okay. So that's the main window of uh, Metaphor. So you have here uh, a command line, so you can type commands, and this is a Python uh, command line. So its commands here are, writ are written in, in Python. So you will see that your input file will be written in, in Python. Um, this window is just the output window, so when I will run uh, a test, informations will be printed to the, in this window. And here I see what is called the Python path, so it's the, all the places on your, com on your computer where the, you, you can have uh, input files, input Python files. So, for example, here uh, I have this uh, uh, this this folder containing Python files. Let's first uh, talk about the license. So, here you can run small tests. So, by default, I don't have any restrictions here. But uh, on your PC, you should see something uh, like uh, restricted to uh, 500 uh, nodes. So what you need to do is to download the license file. So we did it uh, a few minutes ago uh, and uh, load it into Metaphor. So this is done with the, the padlock icon here. So here you click on this icon. And here you have a button import. So you can import the file that has been downloaded. So it's in the here. Then you open, and you must have this, uh, this window which says that the new license has been successfully imported. You must restart a metaphor. So I close everything, I, and then I can restart it, yes. So here you see that the license gives you access to uh, models up to 5,000 nodes. If for some reason you would like to use more nodes, you could ask me a license which is larger. But in practice, 5,000 uh, nodes should be, should be sufficient. And we do that not really to, to restrict your usage of metaphor, but more to avoid uh, people starting a new model and trying to mesh with the billions of nodes and complaining about the fact that everything is slow. So uh, the first thing that you are going to learn here is that uh, when you build a model, you need to use the, a small amount of nodes. And the smaller the, the amount of nodes, the, the faster your model, of course. So how to use a metaphor? So here we are going to use just uh, models that are already on your hard drive. So when you, ins you have installed uh, Metaphor, Metaphor has been installed in C programs. So it's, it's in, in French here, but it's programs. Uh, and uh, you should have a folder which is called uh, Metaphor. Yes, so here, OK? So it's important to have a look at what's inside this, this folder.
because there are many examples here. So there are several interesting folders. So the, the first one is apps. Apps is for applications. And uh, this folder contains many, many applications that are used for the test suite of Metaphor. So each time we, we modify the code, we run all these models to be sure that we haven't destroyed anything. And you see that here, for example, you have the tutorials. So at both places. So you have the tutorials here. And uh, you have Python files. And actually, the, the file that will be uh, interesting today is the tutorial.py file in so apps tutorials. Another interesting folder, that's the last one, is the wrap folder. So the wrap folder contains the Python interface of Metaphor. So Metaphor uh, is a C++ um, program, but it has a Python interface, uh, which uh, is able to, to call the C++ uh, from Python. And this uh, folder contains all the libraries between Python and C++. So it's not the details are not important here, but it's important to just remember the name of this folder. Because in a Python file, the first thing that you're going to do is to import wrap. Wrap is for wrapper. So we choose that name a long time ago, and we never change it. It should be named metaphor. That's my and uh, Everything here is explained in the tutorial.pdf. So for the moment, I'm just doing things uh, with my mouse. But if you follow the instructions on the tutorial, it's exactly the same. So I will go through the, the presentation quickly after that. Uh, but I think it's better to show exactly how it works with my mouse before um, showing how it works uh, in the presentation, because it's, that, it's static. So how to, to run this tutorial.py? So if you are in Metaphor, how to run a test? You need to, to, find, to find it first. So it should, should look like this on your PC. So you can go to this window, click to, to expand this folder, apps, then tutorials and then tutorial. So you just click on it with your, your left mouse button to select it. Then you click on it with your right mouse button. And you click on load. So this will load your Python file into the, this window. So you see here that one window has been opened by the system. And you see here some comments about what happens in your file. So you will see that there are several measures that are called in order to generate nodes, elements, and so on. So you see some output here. Then if you want to run the test, you click on the play button here. So if I cl click on play, I see the model, the mesh, and you see that it's a uh, square made of material, which is deformable. It's actually something which is similar to, to steel. And it is deformed by a, a punch, uh, which goes down and then up. So you see that uh, here, many, many lines have been uh, written to the output. That's the result of the time integration. So you will see during the lectures that a metaphor solves the equilibrium of the structure. So the, the equations are solved using a time stepping procedure. So we do not try to look and, com and compute this deformed shape 
uh, in a one single time step. We just go through time with time increments, and for each time increments, we solve the equilibrium. We solve that the, the balance of the internal forces, so the forces coming from the stresses in each element, and the external forces. The external forces come from the contact, for example, with the tool. Okay. And this is the result of the time integration. So you see here, for example, you have the time, time step 45. That's the, the, the time. And then for each time step, the equilibrium is solved by a newton raphson procedure. So it's a nonlinear algorithm which makes iterations. So for the moment, maybe it looks a little bit complicated to you, but you will uh, learn that uh, during the lectures. So what is important here, that you can see the results of your uh, simulation uh, while it's, um, uh, it is simulated. So in metaphor, you will see that it's not like uh, Abacus, it's not like uh, Enix, I don't know uh, which uh, software you use uh, in, uh, in concerning finite elements. Uh, so it's not as uh, user-friendly as uh, commercial software to uh, draw your model to mesh it. So you will need to write Python files, you need to build uh, scripts, write scripts. But uh, the post-processing can be entirely done uh, with this, uh, this window. So here I can zoom using the mouse, uh, translate. I can even rotate the model because well, Metaphor is, uh, is 3D. You can also go to the config uh, button here. And here you can play with all the, the options. So for example, if I, can, if I want to remove the mesh, I can click here on grid, and each time I modify something here, I need to update um, the, the window. So for example, if I want to remove completely what's inside the mesh, I can remove it, only display the grid. If I want to change what is displayed here, so you see that I have displayed by default the von Mises stresses, I can go to scale values and choose, for example, the equivalent plastic strain, which is another field. I can change the values. So here I can put zero and let's say zero, let's say one. Update. I can put Contours to make it look like uh, it's a better and so on. We can also play with this to have a symmetry to reset the camera. Uh, camera here, update. Yes. So as you can see, it's not well. It works, but it's as user friendly as. Uh, an academic program. So this program has been written by, by us, so the researchers from Jean-Philippe Ponto, e even the, 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 this display in 3D. So we are not, uh, well, we are more scientists than uh, compu computer scientists. Uh, so when we need a new button, we put the button somewhere. Sometimes that's not the best place from a practical point of view, but it works. Uh, so you, you will need to, to learn how uh, these uh, options work uh, a little bit by yourself. Just try. If you s see problems, if you do not find uh, some uh, features that you expect, uh, send me a mail, uh, ask, and uh, I will try to, to answer your question. So that's how uh, calculations are run. So in your project, you're going to write a Python file and then you will run it uh, each time uh, 
with the, the graphical user interface, uh, as I said, as I did uh, before. So an important thing is that Metaphor is, uh, as I said earlier, an academic program, so it's not a commercial one. It means that, for example, all the, the, all the researchers are not really interested in memory management. Um, so it means that um, Metaphor cannot run two models um, sequentially. If I want to restart a simulation or if I want to run another calculation, I need to close Metaphor so that the memory uh, has been uh, completely cleaned and then run Metaphor again. So that I can, for example, run this test and this is another test. Okay. So each time you want to restart Metaphor, restart a simulation, you must close Metaphor and then uh, start again, double click on it. What you can do is to, um, uh, to copy tutorial.py. So that's what I have done here. So you can go to C programs Metaphor, take the tutorial file, so this one, and copy it somewhere on your PC. So for example, I'm going to copy it here, because of course, if you develop, if you develop a model, you're not going to work in this C program folder. You're going to work on your second hard drive, on your work folder and so on. So if I want to modify this file, the best thing to do is to create, let's see, I will create it on my desktop here, project, I put the tutorial into it, and then I would like to run this, this file, not the one that is in C program files. How can I do that? So I must first change, I must make this file appear here. And this is a small, there is a small icon here, there is a folder with a plus sign that can be used to change the first folder uh, of this uh, tree. So if you just click here, if you select so I go to my, to my desktop, and then project. If I select this project, this folder, I now have access to the tutorial. So I can load it and run it again. So imagine now that you have a model that runs for, let's say, half an hour. You don't, you don't want to run it each time you want to see the results. So you must know how the results are stored to your disk. So the results, by default, are stored in this first folder. So here, Uh, it will be in this desktop slash backslash uh, project. And uh, you see that Metaphor has uh, created a folder which is called Workspace. And then the name of your test, which is tutorial. And then many files. And that's, of course, the files that you are interested in. So there are several um, types of files. The first one is the txt file. So it contains what was displayed during the calculation. So you remember steps, iterations, and so on. 
So that's, even if you have closed metaphor, you can just have a look at what happened during your calculation, okay? All these files with the extension .bfact.gz are snapshots of your results at a given time step. So you have seen that you have several time steps. So that's this file contains all the results of the mesh at time step 0. Time step 30, 35. Time step 85. Okay. You will see also that in the input file, you can, um, you can define what I call history curves. So it means that these files, bfact.gz, contains all the, the results at a given time, but sometimes you're interested at a given location of your mesh, and you would like to have, let's say, the force, which is, acts at a given node, for all the time steps. So you have two ways to, to, to see results at a given time step and you have everything on the mesh or at a particular location for all the time steps. So these history curves uh, are stored in uh, files that, are, that have the extension dot, uh, ASCII so ASCII uh, means uh, text, and they are just simple text files that can be loaded in MATLAB, Python, or Excel. So you have column, and here it means that the force at the first time step is zero, then the force acting on the punch at the... So that was... The, the initial force, then the force at time uh, step one, time step two, and so on. So if I take this file, if I have also time.ascii, I have all the times at each time step, I can import these two files in either MATLAB or Excel, and then plot the force as a function of time, for example. Okay. And of course, here, what I, what I would like to do is to check the results on the mesh without um, running again the simulation. So can I do that? I'm just checking here that I'm in the correct folder. Then I can load once again the tutorial. And since results are available, by default, Metaphor goes to the workspace. So you see here that you have, you were uh, at this, this view, with the, which is called the Python path, and by loading the file, you go to that view, which is just a view of the workspace folder. And here, you can just click on one given time step, click on the right uh, mouse button, click on load fac. So fac is, is, is well, it's a, it's a French word, so I will not translate it. And you can just check the results at this particular time. So here you see that there is no computation occurring in this in this window. So I can just go back to the first, the third, and inspect the results step by step. Okay? So that's almost all for the how to run a test, which already exists. So I will go through the description of these steps in the presentation. So you will have well, this presentation, live presentation, the video, and uh, the presentation, which explains everything. So let's go to this presentation. So the presentation is talking a little bit about what is metaphor. I will not go 
into the details here because I guess that you have had already a small presentation of what is what metaphor is and uh, what can be done with it. How to install it? That's just written way. Uh, well, all, all the things that I have done, uh, but written uh, on slides. How to run an existing test? That's the same. That's what we have just done uh, for the moment. And then the biggest part is how to build my own finite element model. That's the, the next thing. So let's go quickly through the three points. So what is Metaphor? I've already, so that's the main features of Metaphor. You have seen the graphical user interface, and I just say here that Metaphor is coded in C++ and with a Python interface. And this, the code is, can be seen as uh, the gathering of all the things uh, that uh, are in the um, large deformation class and also all the research projects of, uh, the, of the lab. The typical applications are mainly metal forming processes. So metaphor means metal forming. Um, so we have many interesting big models. You can just click, for example, on roll forming here, and you will see YouTube videos of things that are simulated uh, in 3D with a metaphor. So you have a sheet of metal which goes through rollers in order to make it less flat uh, so that you have a beam with a, a given prescribed uh, section. So that's the thing we do uh, in, the, in the lab of uh, Professor Ponto. You can have a look at other uh, things. So we also use a metaphor for crash and impact problems, uh, also biomechanics and uh, fluid structure interactions so with the PFAM and so on. So that's the website. You have the documentation, but do not read it from uh, the beginning to the end. Few sections are, are in French but well, they are not useful for the project. And uh, also, you, I've added some icons here. So you see that you have, I don't know if it's visible. So you have a student icon, which means that uh, the section is interesting for beginners. Some sections have nothing, so it's, uh, it's just uh, the, the basics of, uh, of metaphor, but you also have these uh, icons. Uh, an expert, which means that uh, it's a feature which works, but it's, um, it's a feature which is not uh, necessary for, for this, uh, this class. You have an Einstein uh, icon, which means that the feature is still in development, but it's documented. So sometimes we document things that are uh, in development, so do not use that. A bomb means that the, the feature is, in, is unstable, so do not use that feature. And sometimes uh, the documentation is missing, uh, but it also means that you don't have to, uh, to read it. So do not read it like this, but you should follow this presentation. And along this presentation, you will see that there are many links to the website. So when I talk to, uh, about, for example, constitutive laws, you will have a link to the list of constitutive laws uh, that are available in Metaphor. <coughs> So what can, I, can be said here? So how to install Metaphor? So if you do not remember the, the buttons and so on, the user password. Um, some details about the installation. How to import the license. So it's explained here. Uh, some explanation about the icons. Some explanations about what's inside C program files metaphor. 
so with the apps and the wrap folder. How to run an existing test, that's what I have done with my mouse. So I have taken the tutorial.py, which lies in the metaphor slash app slash tutorial folder. This is just a description of uh, the window of metaphor. We have may maybe some details that I haven't talked about. You load your model, you click on play, then you have several windows. I haven't shown this window, but you can display curves also, the mesh and the curves. Uh, so that's how to move the tutorial from one place to your desktop, for example. So here I run again tutorial, but from my folder, which is called here my project. And then I explain the files, so the fact files and the ASCII files. Then I explain a little bit uh, the, the graphical user interface with uh, all the buttons, how to display contours, how to display the forces, for example, how to change the display uh, of the, the field which is displayed on the mesh. So my advice, try them and check what is possible. And then how to see the results uh, when the test has been run for a long time. So how to load existing results on your disk. So that's what I've, I've done. And then the content of an ASCII file. And here a small series of commands uh, in MATLAB to load time.ASCII, load force.ASCII, so, and then plot time, comma, force in order to have the force as a function of time. So that's what you're going to do with you with your model once it will it will work. And here, so you must restart metaphor each time you want to rerun your model. Uh, and also an interesting advice, do not hesitate to go to the, the apps the apps folder because there are many, many tests. So you can just have a look, run some of them. Some are really Stupid, just a uh, simple square that uh, are crushed to just to test the material behavior, but uh, some others that are listed here are more uh, sophisticated. So you have a draw bit simulation, hydro forming, deep drawing, and so on. So you can just run them and see what is uh, possible with metaphor. So let's go now in into this uh, big section, but we are just going to to draw you mo our model today. We are going to stop uh, before meshing it, and we will restart next time uh, from the geometry, and uh, we will mesh it uh, with finite elements. We will add materials, boundary conditions, and so on to make it uh, a full model. So how to build this uh, tutorial.py, how to build a model like this. So that will be the, the main goal of your, of your project. So first, you need to have a, an editor, so a text editor to edit your, the file. So you will see here that the Python file is just a file that can be a series of commands. Maybe it's a, a little bit small on the screen, but uh, you can display it on your own screen. Um, so the first thing to do is to install a text editor if you don't have a text editor. So do not use the 
classical uh, notepad editor. It's too. Uh, there, there is no color and so on. So try to look for uh, a better editor. You can use Notepad Plus Plus, for example. But there are also several links here. Uh, maybe you have your own editor. Then you will have to. I will not say learn Python because uh, the idea is not to be an expert in Python, but you will need to be able to read Python uh, scripts and to make some small, uh, to write some small statements, easy statements in, uh, in Python. So if you want to, if you're interested in Python, because Python is, is interesting in general for, for engineers, you can have uh, some uh, interesting books on Python legally with the Ulyage library. So uh, you can take the, the opportunity to be that you are here at the Ulyage uh, University to go to the library. And uh, I don't know if you have ever been in that this site. So it's really interesting, if, even for other classes. So you must be either inside the university or from home connected to the, the VPN. And here you can type, let's say Python, or Python scripting or any, so let's say Python, I'm going to connect with my login and password to be sure that I'm uh, identified as a member of the university. Python language, let's say. And you will see here lots of books. Uh, Python algorithms, mastering basic algorithm in Python language. You, you see here, well, it's, it's written in French, but it's avail online, available online. So you can click here. And as long as you are inside the university, you can download the book freely and legally. So I can download any book here. But... Um, Maybe you're interested in other topics, such as, let's say, aeronautics or some. So take here the opportunity of being here to download all the, the books about the topics of your, let's say, final year project or anything. So, so you have access to all the PDFs from the Springer and also uh, from many other publishers, uh, as long as you are uh, connected uh, first to the Ulyage uh, library. So Python, you don't need to, to install Python to learn Python, because Metaphor is a Python interpreter. So here, if I run Metaphor, I can type Python commands. I can type Python commands here, and the output will be uh, in this, uh, this window. So you can try several Python commands here, or you can download your own uh, copy of Python and uh, make tests uh, outside Metaphor, of course. So here I've written just two slides explaining what should be uh, known from Python, uh, from your point of view. Uh, so that's really, really quick. Uh, so in Python, you can import libraries. So if you want, for example, to compute uh, the cosine of something, the sine of something, the square root of something, all these functions are uh, in uh, libraries. And so you can import them and then uh, you can 
use the functions from that library libraries with the dots. So that will be exactly the same with metaphor. You will import metaphor and then you will call functions from metaphor with this uh, dot syntax. Okay. You can also just make calculations, declare variables. So a equals math dot cos zero. Okay, and then b equals a function of a. You have the print statement. You can do loops. You can also play with the lists. Lists are with the square brackets like this. And here you see that I don't know if which language you you, you use, but in in Python, in order to you don't have any curly braces as in C, for example, uh, the content of for loops or if statements are. Um, uh, well, they, they are written uh, using tabs. So the content of the for loop uh, is uh, what is written uh, with one tab. So here you see that the for loop, the if statement is inside the for loop. You can also, oh, sorry, you can also create functions, so like this, with the def uh, command, so def f of x return x times x defines a function f which returns the square of x. And once again, the ta uh, tabs, tabulations are used to define what is inside the function. So return is inside the function, but print is not inside the function. Okay. So here I print the result of f of 2. So the, the, the second and last slide about Python is how to use objects. So Python is an object-oriented language. So you will not define objects, but you will use objects. So a metaphor uh, is a, a set of objects. So you will uh, create objects and then call methods of, of objects. So objects are uh, like structures with uh, which contains uh, variables and functions acting on these variables. So for example here I have a, an object uh, a type which is O and uh, I create a variable small o, which is of type big O. And when I want to call this function f, which is inside the, um, the object o, I use this dot notation. So for example, in, in metaphor, a material is a class. You can create an object, let's say, uh, hardening law, uh, some, some kind of hardening. And then you can call a function from this object by using the name of your object dot a function. So you will see in a, in a, few, a few seconds how it works uh, in practice. So what is the model defined in tutorial.py? So you, have, you know what it is. It's uh, plane strain crushing of a steel block and uh, this steel is crushed by a cylindrical punch and it includes what we call spring back so spring back is the release of stresses when the, the tool is removed so we have a small yes the, re the release of the internal stresses and uh, small variations the, the elastic recovery of the material uh, when everything is released. So that's the geometry. So how to to write a Python file which uh, do that. So you must understand how a metaphor calls your script. So this is your script with all the commands. This is metaphor. Have, um, this is the graphical user interface. 
and your script must define a function which is uh, called get metaphor. So actually, metaphor is an object. So metaphor, you will the the, the main purpose of, of your uh, script will be to build an object which is called metaphor and fill it with lots of things. So you will, for example, put points into the geometry of metaphor. So, so the idea of the script is to build this huge series of objects which are linked uh, together by, let's say, arrows in this, um, in this drawing. And the main one is metaphor. So the, the graphical user interface will ask your script for an object metaphor. And that's why you will have a function get metaphor that will be the only function, uh, the only mandatory function of your script. It will be called get metaphor and, and it will return metaphor. And that's this tree uh, in uh, more details. So you see that uh, we are going to build one metaphor object and then link several other objects to it so that when you give meta metaphor this object to the, the graphical user interface, to the, the metaphor uh, program, it will be able to look at the geometry, the loads, the materials, and so on. So, of course, do not look at the details for the moment, but the, just look at the idea. So now, from this, uh, this slide, I will just go uh, line by line uh, in the, the script tutorial.py. So if you open tutorial.py, you will see a series of commands, Python commands. And the remaining part of this tutorial is to just understand all the commands. And do not be afraid your model will be very close, the structure of your model will be very, very close to this file. So, for example, how to build the metaphor object is, will be just a copy and paste of a part of this, uh, of this script. So, that's what... If you want to just, if you want to do geometry, you can just define the points or the lines, and if you want to visualize just that. Is it yeah, possible to what? Visualize. Yes, talk. yes. Just you will. That, you that will be the, the last thing we're going to do today. So uh, you will be able to visualize the points, the lines, uh, but it will require some scripting. So, so let's go through all the commands. So you see here first, the, the, the first line is, uh, is needed for uh, if you want to insert some special characters. So sometimes there are French or Spanish persons coming here. They want to make to put comments uh, in the scripts and they use accented characters. So if you do not put this first line, the script will not run because uh, there are accents. So do not forget this line. Then you can use Python comments. So Python comments start with the hash uh, symbol. And do not uh, hesitate to put a lot of comments in your, in your script, of course. So next, the, the next line is uh, this uh, wrap folder. Uh, so we import everything from the wrap folder. So you now you know what wrap is. That's metaphor. So this first line imports into Python all the classes, all the functions, all the features of metaphor. So it's needed also. Next, we will use some uh, math functions in this script. So I import math. So the next line is uh, the creation of this metaphor object. And you will just need to copy-paste these, these lines. 
So creating a, a metaphor object is just writing some name, could be metaphor, but it could be A, it could be M, it could be anything, equals metaphor with a capital letter and uh, brackets here. So this creates an object uh, of type metaphor and assign it to a variable which is called metaphor in, uh, in lowercase letter. Then you have seen in this tree that metaphor contains uh, another um, another object which is called domain and you will see that a lot of time we are going to put um, to access other objects using this um, dot get um, method so for example in order to get the domain object which lies inside metaphor I use the metaphor dot get domain command. So once again, in your script, you will just copy paste this because you will need the domain for uh, several commands, but the, the command will be always the same. And then you define the function get metaphor I told you about, which returns metaphor. So nothing. So this is maybe complex at first sight, but in practice, you can just copy-paste these lines. So an important thing here is uh, the fact that uh, in Python, uh, variables act like pointers. So it means that, uh, for example, uh, so there are several examples um, where I uh, well, I play with variables here, and uh, sometimes uh, strange things uh, can happen. It also means that here, metaphor, domain, are just variable names. So as I said earlier, uh, you can call this variable m, you can call this variable d. That's exactly the same. So these two, two codes are completely uh, identical. So the ne next thing uh, in this script is the definition of parameters. So that's just variables that will be useful later. Uh, but instead of, for example, when you will draw your punch, you will need the radius. You could put the, 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 the size of your radius, the length of your radius everywhere in the, all the commands. But it's much better, of course, to define a parameter, a variable, the, at the beginning of your file, and then use R in, instead of the value. So that, in your project, if you want to make R vary, you just modify this line and everything will work. So there are several parameters. And then let's uh, draw so we need to draw the, this uh, steel square and the punch. So first, we need to put things into the geometry of the model. So the geometry is inside the domain. So you need to access the geometry. And the geometry can be accessed uh, with a get method. So the geometry is inside the domain. So geometry equals domain.getGeometry. Since you have the geometry, you can call functions of this object. And one important function of this object is this, um, this command, which says that your model will be in plane strain. Another option is uh, axisymmetric or 3D. So from your geometry, the first thing to do is to say that if you're in 2D, in which kind of 2D, on 3D. So we do that here because we just have access to the geometry. Next, we need to define points. So how to define points? Points are put into the point set 
which lies into the in the geometry of the domain of metaphor. So once again, so that's the, the third time, we access an object with a get method from, well, if you have a look at this, um, this drawing, you will see that the point set is inside the geometry. So point set equals geometry dot get point set. And as soon as you have the point set, you can call methods of the point set. And the interesting method here is, to, is the one which defines a point. It takes one number, which is just the, the index of the, um, of the point, and uh, the x and y values of the point. So here I define four points, labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, at these coordinates. Okay. I also define points for the arc of circle, which will uh, be used for the for the tool. And here, of course, uh, the, the the arc of circle is defined with four with three points. And here, in order to use these commands. I put one point here, but of course I could have used this point, this point, and another point here. So with these two commands, I define points five, six, and seven for the tool. With point set dot define, and you see here that I have used all the parameters so that. If I want to, for example, change the radius of my um, of my circle, I just go in front of uh, at the first line of my script. I change the value, and then I rerun the script, and I have another tool. So that's the idea. So next time we need curves. So a ge geometry will be will be defined by points. Then we will have curves which links uh, points, so for example a line which links two points, uh, an arc of circle which is drawn uh, with uh, three points. Then the next level will be wires, wires are contours, and the last level for us in 2D will be sides, so that's the surface. Which will be, be which will be built with on contours, so it's like a hierarchical uh, way to uh, to see the geometry. It's called boundary representation. So points, then curves, then contours, which are called wires in the case of uh, metaphor, and then sides, which uh, rely on the, the shape of the, the contours. So for the curves, I take the curve set, which is inside the geometry, as I did for the point set, and then I can add four lines, which are numbered one, two, three, four, and which are based on the points number one, two, two, three, three, four, four, one. Okay, so this. This is another operator on the point set. So if you use the point set with brackets like this and the number, you get the point uh, you, you put here uh, on the point set. So here, just I just say that you can copy paste your lines, and that's really readable so there is no problem but maybe in your model you will have lots of lines maybe you will have several patterns that will repeat so sometimes it's in, it's interesting to to take advantage of the python loops for example or the python commands so these lines these four lines can be written as a loop for example like this you can also define functions. So, for example, if you want to make several uh, tools, 
you can put the commands in uh, the function and then call it several times with uh, several uh, different uh, parameters so, so that you have several tools. So next I draw the tool and here I add it's not a line it's an, an arc which has which is based on three points and an, uh, it has a number the number five. So this number is completely arbitrary, so you can use it, you can, you can say 100, 1000 if you want, but it must be unique among lines. So you can have one point and one line which shares the same number, but not two, line, two, two lines. And here it's also important to define the, you will see later, for contact, because we are going to define contact between the tool and, um, uh, and, and the square, it's important to uh, choose the right orientation of this, this arc. So here, it's an arc which is based on point seven six five. So 7, 6, 5, it means that the orientation is in this direction. <coughs> It's imp this is important, but you will understand why uh, later. So here, the, the next level is the, the contour. So that's the, the wire. It's called wire in metaphor. So once again, I, I get an access to the wire set, uh, the set of wires in metaphor, in metaphor's geometry with the get command, so meta geometry dot get wire set gives me a pointer to the wire set so that I can use this dot command with once again the add uh, method which allows me to put wires into the wire set. So the syntax is a little bit complicated but it's Python so if you learn it you, you learn Python, uh, and it's also very convenient when you want to make loops, when you might want to make uh, very big uh, models. So here I have built a wire, which is based on curve 1, 2, 3, 4. So it means, as the, the curves, that uh, I have uh, built a wire which has this orientation. So it's a counterclockwise orientation. This is important for the for later for meshing. If I wanted to to define the other orientation, so I can just write uh, the the opposite, so four three two one, and so the wire would have the the other orientation. So the last step is the the side, so the last level, and sides are taken from the geometry with a get command, get side set. As soon as you have the side set, you can call the add command to add a side, the number of which is one here, and a side is defined as a series of wires. Why a series? Because there is one boundary, but you can also have holes. So the first, the first one is the external boundary, and if you have a, a second wire, it will be an internal hole in your um, in your side. So here, at this moment, we have metaphor, the domain geometry, and then several sets of things of geometrical entities, points, curves, wires, and sides. Uh, so the the structure of our model is like this. So, to answer the question, how to see what I have done? So if, if I want to see the model at this location, I need to program something. So I need to add some commands, which says, so it's small, uh, but I don't know how to increase the 
So the code is written here. So it's, it's an if block which creates a window. Then I add to the window my point set, my curve set. I open the window and I wait for a key. So input is the way to wait for a key uh, in Python. So you see that in your the tutorial.py, this if block is disabled. So it's if zero, if zero is false. So if I run this script, if zero, this code is not executed. So if I want to execute it here, I can type one or I can type that it's longer two, if true. And then I can run my Yes, I can run it, and I have my geometry. So here you can go to, you have points here, curves. So I can click on labels, update. And well, it's very small here, sorry, but you, you see P1, P2, P3, P4. So you see all the labels for the points and the curves, C1, C2, C3, and so on. So it's not as convenient as a nice graphical user interface with the mouse when you can click and so on. But in practice, you will see that the projects have, almost all of them, uh, uh, very simple geometry. We do not want you to spend uh, several weeks on the geometry, and you will have very rapidly your geometry set up. It's uh, really, uh, really easy. So the idea is really to focus on the numerics and the physics in the project. So if you have problems with the geometry, I will help you, and that's why we will meet again so uh, session three and four will be mainly uh, sessions for uh, being sure that your model is meshed and works. Uh, so I will help you uh, build this model. So the idea is not to make you uh, remember special commands of metaphor that you will never use later. Um, so. So that's all for this tutorial. We will uh, stop here, but uh, we have uh, a quarter uh, of an hour left. And the idea is now to talk about the projects so that uh, you will be able to choose the project if you want, even today. Uh, I will describe the projects uh, briefly, one by one. I will, we are going also to go through the guidelines um, of the project, so just um, things that you need to remember when you write your reports and so on, and all the practical details. If you have questions, of course, do not hesitate to raise your hand. Um, so here, first, the, the guidelines, maybe. So let's go back to teaching large deformations of solids. And you see here guidelines. So I've already said that you will be working on a group of two students. So you must first find someone uh, who, who wants to, to work with you. Uh, what else? So the, the idea, you will see, I will uh, detail one, one project. The idea of all the projects is the same. So the, the structure of all projects is the same. You will be uh, given a, a scientific paper. Uh, well, most of the projects have a, an associated reference. And the idea is to uh, to make the, the model of the paper with the metaphor. 
and and also to make links between uh, the theory that has been that has been uh, seen in class and what you are studying. So, for example, if you if your uh, model involves let's say uh, contact. Uh, it's very important to be aware of what has been uh, said in class about contact and uh, in your project we'll try to make links about all the difficulties, all the algorithm, all the details of the algorithms, uh, the contact algorithms of uh, metaphor uh, and uh, your projects and the results that you, you, you see uh, with metaphor. So the, the, the calendar is uh, this one. So the exam, I, I think it's uh, the, the 6th of June. So I would like to, to receive the, the, the report uh, before uh, December uh, 20, the 27th. So it's a, a little bit more than a week before the, the exam. If the exam was uh, postponed to the end uh, of January, for example, we could uh, delay if you want, uh, I don't know. But for the moment, uh, that's uh, this date, so that I have enough time to read all the reports. So if I, there are six reports, maybe I will, uh, I will have more than uh, 400 pages to read, so it will take a, a long time. And so the exam is the presentation. And so before the presentation, uh, send me your uh, presentation so that uh, I can keep a track of your of your work. So two two main uh, dates to remember. The first one is the report and your Python scripts, of course. And the second one is the, uh, the day of the exam when you you must send me the, the presentation. So it, it should be the 6th of uh, January. But, well, I've, that's just uh, 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 well, it was a mail from uh, Jean-Philippe Ponto. Uh, I haven't seen that in the, but maybe it's defined in your, uh, in, on, I don't know, in campus or in your my ULG. Okay, so uh, the report must be written either in Word, uh, LaTeX, or whatever, but it should be converted to PDF. Uh, it should be completely unlocked so that I can uh, select the text and I can also see if you have copy-pasted text from the internet. So it's, it's rather uh, usual for such a project. So the, the length is uh, about uh, 50 pages. Uh, so don't be afraid, it's, it's not a large amount of pages because you will have a lot of, of uh, figures, a lot of graphs. And I would like you to use uh, the font size uh, 12. Uh, so it's, it's a large font size. So it's not a, a, a big, a big report. So focus on what is interesting. Do not uh, take uh, ten pages to recall the theory. Do not uh, talk about what is can be seen in, the, in class. So you must add, add numbers and so on. Uh, double check spelling, of course. That's a structure of the, the, the structure of the report. Uh, have a look at it. You are not obliged to follow this uh, structure, but if you do not know how to present your work, this can be a good way. So we'll read, read that uh, later. I have also uh, added some advices for the, the figures because uh, a lot of times the figures are completely bad, let's say. So, uh, how to make uh, good figures? So, for example, see compare this one to that one. So that's uh, a figure that can be easily done in MATLAB without uh, paying attention to 
what you are, you are doing, and that's a, a better figure. It's even could be even uh, made better if you if you spend more time. But at least try to make things readable. Uh, so it's very important to make uh, the axis labels uh, rather big, for example, because you will use these graphs in your presentation. And uh, the main problem during the presentation is the fact that we are not able to read the graphs while you speak. So when you write your report, pay attention to the size of your your labels and so on. So one also very important thing is the fact that Jean-Philippe Ponto doesn't know anything about the project, the content of the project. So if for, so when you when you will present your project and uh, several projects are completely new, so that's really uh, completely new projects, uh, he has never heard about these projects. So it's it's impossible to say, for example, uh, as the paper, the paper said, uh, or, uh, you, you must spend time, for example, uh, describing uh, the, the, the problem. You must, uh, you must spend a few pages uh, explaining what's inside the, the paper, what's the interesting parts, what are the interesting results, and uh, what is your, your project. And, in the report, it's important to do that, but it's even more important uh, during the presentation because uh, Jean-Philippe Ponto doesn't know, for example, uh, the impact problem the, or the, uh, the deep drawing problem. He, he's not aware of all the, the details of the problem. So we must talk to someone who doesn't know anything uh, about uh, the, the problem. So, some advices about uh, input files also here. So, you must try to make the input files uh, clean because uh, I will run your input file just to check that everything works. Um, so, put comments also because if there are problems in your in your results, I will try to read what you have done, and if I'm not able to read uh, and uh, find uh, the problem, I will just guess that uh, nothing is working. So take a great uh, care of your of the cleanliness, the, the cleanliness of your script. Concerning the the presentation, so it's uh, it will be in, uh, in January. Uh, and uh, it will last uh, half an hour. So, and you will um, you will be in front of the whole whole class, all the students. So everybody will be in the same room, and uh, each group uh, will present uh, for um, half an hour. So you can plan a twenty-minute presentation. And uh, what is a little bit complicated is the fact that Jean-Philippe Proto likes to uh, ask questions during the presentation. So it means that uh, if, for example, you have something not really clear on the second slide or the third slide, you can spend uh, 15 minutes on the, the first two slides. So you will be really frustrated uh, at the end of the presentation because you will never reach the end of the presentation in your conclusions. So the, the presentation is really important and be sure that it's understandable by someone who doesn't know anything about uh, your problem. Of course, you can guess that uh, the people know about uh, large deformations of solids, but do not expect them to understand, to, to know uh, what uh, you are uh, solving. And do not forget uh, conclusion. So that's the guideline. So remember that these guidelines are there. And uh, in December, when you will finish your report, go through these guidelines again to be sure that everything is correct before sending the report. It will uh, make you uh, earn a lot, of, uh, a lot of points in your final grade. 
So next, finally, the, the projects. Uh, so I have created, uh, I think, six or seven projects. Now, uh, so the first one is, uh, is the impact of three rings. And for each project, you see that there are usually two files. So as I said, one file is the project presentation, project statement. The second one is a reference uh, paper. So for example, for this first uh, project, you see here the paper, which is a real scientific paper from, uh, well, Elsevier, with many, many things. And the problem which is interesting here is a little bit lost among many scientific details. So uh, you must read the, the paper, but of course you do not need to understand everything because maybe, well, I, I think that this paper, for example, uh, explain a new contact method. You, you are not going to implement a new contact method. You are going just to test the method that is implemented in Metaphor. So you must understand the context, but you're not, uh, you're not going to understand the, the, the new algorithm. So you read the paper and you read this uh, description of the project and all the projects are uh, described like this one. So you have a small introduction saying that well, here we are trying to simulate the high velocity impact of two flexible rings in two, inside a third ring. The geometry is this one. Everything is in the reference paper, which is here, which is referenced here. Then you have some remarks and hints. So for example, if there are several things that you must neglect in the paper, or if some, some hypotheses are not clear enough in the paper, I have added some uh, interesting, uh, let's say, hints or remarks. Uh, and then uh, I say what the, the goal of uh, the project is. So the idea, and that's the same for all the projects. So the idea is to, to build uh, an efficient 2D numerical model. So it's always 2D. There are no 3D, uh, 3D problem. You do not focus on the geometry. You focus on the, the methods. Uh, and then study the physical behavior. So there are mainly three, three big steps. It's, so the first one is to build a model which is parameterized, so with several parameters, uh, which works. So for example, here you just draw circles, you mesh them, you put boundary conditions, you make, you put uh, several, uh, you, you guess the numerical parameters, uh, and then you try to make make your model run, but of course it will be not reliable. So that's the first step, and I hope that after the fourth uh, tutorial session, ever, everybody will reach that, uh, that first step. So everybody will have this Python file with, which, is, which works, which produces colors, I would say, not results, colors. Uh, then the second big part is the numerical analysis. So the idea is to uh, select interesting results and see how these results change with the numerical parameters uh, of metaphor. So for example, if you have contacts, you will see in, in the, during the, the lectures that contacts uh, is uh, controlled by several 
numerical parameters such as the penalty coefficient. Uh, you have also uh, parameters related to uh, contact detection and so on. Um, so, for example, in this case, you could have a look at the for contact forces, the, the shape of the ring, the contact area, the internal stresses, and extract these values and uh, study how these values uh, evolve with these parameters. The idea is to find the best numerical parameters uh, which give, uh, which give um, a reliable model, um, but also a fast model. So for all the, the numerical parameters, there is uh, some kind of trade-off between um, accuracy and uh, at speed and CPU time. So, for example, you have uh, seen this in uh, the finite element uh, class. If you use a mesh, the, the, the size of the mesh, the number of elements, uh, will play uh, as the, the, this kind of parameter. So, if you choose many elements, it will be usually very precise, very accurate, but it will be slow. Uh, and all the parameters uh, in, in metaphor will have the, the same kind of, um, of behavior. So, for example, for the penalty coefficient, the, the best value is penalty equals infinity. Of course, it does not work. And the, the larger the penalty is, the slower your convergence is. So you would like to put a very, very large penalty coefficient, but it leads to a very slow model. So you must find the, the, the best value of your penalty coefficient uh, to have reliable results, because, of course, if you, if you choose a lower penalty coefficient, the results, the, the accuracy decreases. Uh, and so you have the accuracy which increases, the CPU uh, which also increases, and so you must find the best value so, so, so that you have a reliable model. So you, you must be aware of your, the precision of your model. You, must, you can say that, for example, I choose this mesh because I know that if I take a mesh which is twice finer, it will, the, my simulation time will be, let's say, three times higher, but my, my accuracy on the results are just a few percent uh, of what I'm uh, expecting. So this kind of reasoning must be included in the, into the report for several parameters that are related to your problem. So, for example, you have impact, you have the time integration scheme, several parameters of the time integration scheme. So you have um, parameters related to the, the time integration. If you have contact, you have this penalty. If you don't have uh, other, uh, if you have other kind of uh, simulations, you could have, for example, the newton raphson tolerance. So the tolerance on the equilibrium uh, at each time step. That's also an, uh, an interesting uh, parameter. You can also check the, the type of elements. You will see that there are several kinds of elements and several ways to integrate stresses. So you can choose the best way, the one which do not modify too much your accurate results, but decrease your CPU time and so on. So that's the, the second part, which is the, the big part. I could say the, the big, the, the part that should make links with the theory. Okay, and that's the big part because in this part, uh, we, we can check that you have understood the, the theory. And the last one is, it's like the, a gift when you're when you have uh, finished this, the, the second big part is um, just the, um, 
you can use your model to study the physics. So for example, if you have experimental results in your paper, you can try to check your accurate model and check and compare your results with the experimental results of the paper or with the experimental the, the numerical result of the paper. You can also try to see, for example, here, what happens when friction is uh, changed. So friction is that's a physical parameter. Friction uh, models the physics, uh, but the penalty coefficients model the, the, the algorithm. So you must really distinguish between uh, physical parameters that are that can be understandable that can be understood by uh, persons who make experiments and uh, numerical results which are the parameters that are only understandable by persons who know uh, the methods so if you talk about the penalty coefficient to someone who throw, let's say, uh, things on the wall and, uh, with, and watch them with a camera uh, and make many experiments, he will not understand what it is. But if you talk about friction, he knows what friction is. So you must be sure that... Uh, so you, you, you must not change the physics during this part. So the, that's the, the three main parts of, the, of each project. So if I now go quickly um, through the, the projects. So the first one is this two deformable rings which um, uh, impacts on each other on a third ring. So here you have contact, you have time integration, you have materials, you have uh, self-contact. So one ring can be in contact with itself, for example, you have friction, you have many things. The second project is uh, the, a model of roughness. Uh, so you have an asperity, which is deformable. I don't know, maybe it's larger here. So you have a, a large... But actually, it's really small. You have an asperity, which is deformable. Uh, rigid asperity and the idea is to study the friction between the two asperities and uh, in the paper they study the, the, the global friction so the tangential forces the horizontal forces as a function of the vertical forces uh, and also as a function of this gap between the two asperities we can also study the velocity you can also study the local friction. Uh, you can also study the, the influence of the material. It can be purely elastic. It, it, it can be also uh, uh, plastic or viscoplastic and so on. The third project is this uh, impacts of a ring that I, take, uh, that I took for as an example of uh, experiments. So here the paper is a full experimental paper, so there is no, uh, no model in the paper. So that's a, a team of researchers uh, that have uh, studied this uh, impact of rings as different speed uh, on a rigid wall. So depending on the initial velocity, depending on the material, several behaviors, uh, and several shapes are obtained, and uh, that's um, studied in detail in this, uh, uh, in this paper. The next project is about uh, uh, oxetic structures, so that's, uh, so that's special materials that uh, have a negative uh, Poisson ratio, so it means that uh, in this kind of materials, when you uh, pull them, they, um, they grow in size in the other direction. And so these kind of materials are really interesting, and usually they are made uh, with a microscopic structure, which is like this. So I don't know if 
there is, yes, so that's this kind of structure. So when you pull on these two beams, let's say, the, the structure uh, becomes wider. And uh, the idea of the project is to study one cell of this kind of structure. But of course, you can go beyond that and make several cells and uh, see how uh, the, the structure behave uh, for uh, several cells. The next project is about uh, a rubber, rubber seal compression. So we have a, I don't know, yes, maybe larger here. You have, you have a rubber piece like this, which is in a, in a box. And the idea is to model it uh, when uh, this wall crushes it until there is no, no empty space. So it's really interesting because it involves uh, hyper-elastic materials. So that's um, that's a, ch a chapter of the, the lecture. Contact, self-contact, and so uh, it's, it's a really complete problem. The next is the spring back of a uh, metal sheet. So here, the, it's a really simple geometry. I will try to make it bigger. So you have a sheet of metal which is uh, between two curved tools. And the idea is to make this sheet uh, cur curved. So uh, it's like... Uh, like the crushing of the, of the tutorial, except that uh, the idea is to bend the, the sheet. Uh, and of course, you know that because the, there is elasticity, the shape, the final shape of the sheet will not be exactly the same as the, the tools. So the idea is to study this difference of shapes, uh, which depends on the process, which depends on the, the radius, which depends on the material uh, of the sheet. And the last uh, project is the buckling of two arches, like this. So, imagine that you have a, a flexible beam like this, another beam uh, which is fixed here and you uh, push on this side of the, the, this ring. So at the beginning of the deformation, this uh, ring will deform. And then after uh, a distance, there will be uh, an instability. And uh, this point will just go quickly uh, here because the, the second beam will, will collapse like this. So it's an instability problem. And in the paper, it's modeled as just two arches like this. So once again, the geometry is really simple. But the physics behind and the, the phenomenon is not, uh, not easy. And these two arches are pulled uh, by two forces. So it will, the, the first arch will deform, and then the second one will, will flip like this. And uh, you will have a force which increases, and then decreases, and then re-increases. Re Once again, exactly the same kind of uh, questions, or the same kind of uh, structure for your, for your study. So that's all.